Hey everyone, Brian from Disney Bites again, back with part two of the Touch of Disney semi-retrospective, mostly food reviews, but also just a chat about my experience during the Touch of Disney food festival. And definitely taking kind of a sidetrack, I wanted to kind of speak to moving around and navigating around California Adventure during Touch of Disney. While everybody really did observe social distancing and a lot of the kind of Disney characters or even the parades that we're so used to kind of hearing on the background or enjoying as they're passing by. I'm looking right at you, uh, Andy's um, army soldiers, especially with the drums. It was definitely and sorely missed during this kind of um, event. Although there are still some that are going by, um, I could not help but notice that there was an intercom and kind of a old timey radio speaker that kept recommending to either mobile order your food or just to keep enjoying the day and also to mobile order your food. I kid you not, we probably heard that maybe every seven and a half, eight minutes to be not exact. But you would hear that kind of pipe in through the kind of um, reimagined uh, current pop music to don't forget to mobile order your food. <laughs> And jumping on to the kind of the cheese style hype train, I wanted to talk about the next one we tried over at the Smoke Jumpers Grill, and that is the brisket mac and cheese. And so, if you're starting to see a pattern of cheese filled types of entrees from Touch of Disney, you're not entirely wrong. <laughs> and so, the portion on this one was quite small to be honest, but the brisket definitely more than made up for it. I don't think we'll ever have a chance to enjoy this um, offered by the normal park. Um, I'm hoping so, but I don't think it'll commit any uh, any real option. I'm trying to think possibly through Carthay Circle or you know more of the larger restaurants if you're thinking of say Blue Bayou might offer something. But having a brisket style flavored with mac and cheese is so good, and even the uh, the onions was a very very nice touch could even offer as a palate cleanser at the same time but i really did enjoy this the the cheese was definitely gooey in that good way <laughs> this next review coming up is actually one that i wanted to talk about i didn't necessarily enjoy but it's for the watermelon aguas frescas that was served at the cluck a doodle do my mistake, it was called the Cluck a Moodle Do <laughs> food stand. So as well as the weather was, the the need for a good beverage, and especially a beverage that's offered at the Touch of Disney Festival was definitely enticing. So we went with the watermelon aguas frescas. And unfortunately we were not very impressed. In the end, while it looked pretty good, the amount of ratio to price as well as the amount of ice that was in the cup quickly let us know that we were running out of beverage far quicker than we were actually far quicker than our thirsts were quenched. Anyways, that's it for me for this part for the Touch of Disney Food Festival. If you thought anything in here was enlightening or informative, feel free to hit that like button. If you thought, well, it's time for some Avengers Campus type of goodness and that amazing looking sandwich, <laughs> go ahead and hit that thumbs down button. That's fine too. But other than that, thanks for listening and I'll hope to see you next time.